Hi, my name is Willix, and this is episode 22 of Project Ozone Reloaded in Titan mode. Today we're going to go over uh, setting up the thermal lilies and how to uh, give them lava. We're also going to set up a portal to Alfheim. But before we do that, I want to show you a couple of things that I've learned in between videos. One, when we were making the crossbow, if we had made the crossbow with regular string, when we were making it with the magical wood, I used the uh, flame string there. If we'd made it with regular string, we would have got a full nine modifiers. That was something that R.R. Bars had uh, told, mentioned to me. And I should have done it that way. I didn't real realize that at the time. Doesn't really matter that much because I have modifiers on my existing crossbow that I'm not using, but uh, it's something I should have pointed out at the time. Ooh, I'm going the wrong way. Uh, next thing I want to show you is this was suggested to me by Frau uh, Lisfi. And down here, I replaced the uh, harvester with a armor. AgriCraft Farming Station. It doesn't have any of the modules in it, just the standard one. But what I did different was I put a uh, Matic in there, a Tinkerer's Matic, with a Fortune 3. And it seems to be increasing the yield on how much I'm getting from it. However, what I was more interested in finding out, so I've got, what, 10,000 of the shells so far and 12 basics, four double layers, one octatic. The ratio between what I got last time on like 30,000 of them, and I took one or two or, uh, octatics out of here already, is about the same. It's just um, same diff that the sprinklers caused me to get more in the same amount of time, or imaginary time block would cause me to get more in the same amount of time. That's basically what this fortune seems to be doing. What I was interested in was whether it was increasing the chance of getting better drops from the luck, but they seem to be about equal, so that's not the issue. But good to know that it's probably the least laggy way to increase the productivity from it. Like sprinklers are very laggy. Um, you know, you got imaginary time blocks or lilies of fertility uh, or the, um, oh, I forget what the block's called that goes underneath, growth accelerators or growth accelerators. Uh, next up, I don't know whether you're interested in this one or not. I've been making a lot of the pulsating chipsets because I wanted to make a lot of uh, processors for later on. And I got sick of coming over. I, I brought out a terminal at first so that I could refill this thing with uh, ender pearls quite often. And I got sick of doing it. So I decided to use the same thing with the resident retriever to keep it fully stocked because it just isn't that fast that I need to worry about running on ender pearls. I got too many anyways. But a weird thing happened to me when I did that. I used to be pulling out and pushing in from the bottom. And once I put either the interface or the retriever, I don't know which caused it, it would no longer let me pull out from the bottom. So I had to go back to using a vacuum chest to suck up what it drops, because it was just throwing them anywhere. I don't know what caused it, but I thought it was interesting that it did. Over here, I uh, put some chickens in there. So the way I got the chickens is I had a bunch of eggs in here. I started throwing them against the wall over there. And that spawned some chickens. And I fed them some seeds and had them breed once. I needed that for feathers for the um, rune of air. I had very few feathers at the time. Now, um, I've already taken many stacks of them out of here. So I've been getting quite a few feathers. Once I get a, a reasonable... What are you doing out here? Get down there. Once I get a reasonable number of them, I'll go and put one chicken on top of a hopper and do it that way as for a continuous flow. But I wanted to get sort of a jump start on it, so I did it with something a little bit stronger. 
Oh, one other thing over here that I wanted to mention. Um, so you wonder about it later. I switch this over to spikes. Now, I ended up having to use fans, which annoyed me terribly. I made the um, the interdiction torch from Reliquary. It does not work like the interdiction torch from Project E. It's very weak. I'm not sure it could even work through walls. And it was a light source, so it was unsuitable to put it inside there. So that didn't work. So I had to go to fans to do it. I've got one spike on the top for spiders that try to get up there and three spikes down below. They're all enchanted with um, sharpness and uh, looting. I don't have the one for the mob souls yet. And then I've got it, instead of uh, dealing with mob essence now, it's piping out into this, the experience ob obelisk. And uh, I've got plenty, plenty of uh, 33 drums of essence. I tried using these for a while. I, they annoyed me because they wouldn't stack. So I went back to using the drums. So I will have plenty of that for later. Okay, let's get on to the main part of the day. Oh, yeah, one more stop. One more extra thing. Actually, I should eat. I switched to uh, apple smoothies. They're just uh, apples and uh, they're made like apple juice, only you use a snowball with them. They're better than apple juice, not quite as good as toast sandwiches. I need... Uh, I think I brought them over here for the chicken chair. Yeah. I need a seed. That's just a regular seed. Oops. Get up there. And we're going to drop it in there. And we get a Minicio seed. I'd already done it once before, so now I got two of them. And we'll go over here. And, oh, I know what I haven't done yet. I didn't. Hold on. We'll put this in first and set that to always active, flip that switch, but I had I never got around to doing this, sorry. So when I uh, show up with all sorts of 10, 10, 10 Minicio seeds, you won't think I started uh, Magical Crops without you. So I just put them in the mach in that machine, and it'll make them all 10, 10, 10, and then I'll move them over to another uh, har um, farming station to uh, harvest them. Okay, so let's talk about what I did here for the thermal lilies. So first off, you got to understand how thermal lilies work. They they eat lava the way a hydrangea would eat water. It's got to be on the diagonal for it. It eats one source block of lava, and then it gives out mana for 45 ticks. Then it goes into what they call a cooldown mode. And during that cooldown mode, if another source of lava is nearby, it will drink it and reset the cooldown mode for another five minutes. So if you keep lava constantly around it, it will never produce mana again. So we had to get a way to place uh, lava in the world and then wait six seconds, not uh, six minutes, not six seconds, wait six minutes before it did it again. So I ended up using dispensers. I tried droppers at first, they didn't work. I tried the open block, uh, open block, block placers. They didn't work either. But dispense, the uh, Minecraft dispensers worked just fine. So they are pointing, we've got four of them pointing this way. Though you see the little hole on the side. And then we've got four of them pointing this way. And there's a solid block in between each one. So they can put out 
they've got buckets of lava in them and they place one bucket of lava each time they get a pulse and they get a pulse because we're using a hovering hourglass from Batania. You could use any timer you want. I just happen to use the Batania one. And to set it to six minutes, I put six soul sand in it. So each soul sand is one minute. And then it's a, it, when it ticks off, it sends a charge down, or a pulse, down through the red net cable to each of these and they spit out one at the time. It's going to do it any second now. I, I'd watch it, but it's... Uh, you don't see it. It happens so fast, it's like a blink of the eye. Let's give it half a sec. How long does this take? You'll hear, you'll hear the noise, and then boom, it's gone. Yeah, see, like the puff of smoke, that's all you see. <laughs> and they're gone already. Okay, and so as you can see, they're all full again. They're doing that because of this tank, which keeps filling the uh, buckets. Um, the way that happens is I've got it set up here with, uh, for the insert, it only accepts empty buckets. And for the extract, it only extracts buckets of lava. So I didn't have to set filters on each of these just on, like I'll show you the extract as well, just on that one. That's one of the nice things about item conduits. If it doesn't have anywhere to go, it won't even try to pull it from the machine. And they're all going in and out, like f here it's going in on green and out on brown. The reverse up here, in on brown and out on green. And so we're doing, uh, there's eight on each side, so there's 16 of these things. I'm not getting anywhere near enough net mana. These things are almost out. I keep using all the mana as it's produced and can't get onto big jobs. So we need better. And I think what I'm going to go with are endoflames. And endoflame, don't let that one scare you. Endoflames, for that I need pixie dust. To get pixie dust, I need the portal to Alfine. Just throw a mana pearl in and you get the pixie dust. So that's what we're going to work on. Uh, to get there, one of the things I need was a portal core. Elven portal core, I think. Elven gateway core. Okay, so we need terra steel nuggets. So I needed to make some Terra Steel. I, I have made a couple of the things here. I've made the uh, Elven Gateway already, and the Glimmering Living Wood, and then regular Living Wood. And then I thought, no, I should be making this on camera. So, But I did make the Terra Steel Agramulation Plate so that I could make uh, Terra Steel. So how you do that is terrestrial, not Terra Steel terrestrial agglomeration plate. Okay, so you need one of each of the um, season runes and a rune of mana. So the five basic runes, a block of mana steel, which is nine uh, mana steel, and then blocks of lapis. And there's four blocks of lapis there, and there's a uh, living uh, rock underneath this as well. So five uh, living rocks. I put the chest there just as a backstop. So the way you make terra steel, actually I don't think there's enough man over here to do it. Let's take one, st this is one stack of the low end, the, the lousy uh, black lotus. And that'll give us a half a, half a tub of it. And that's about how much it takes to make uh, one terra steel. So you take a mana diamond, a mana pearl, and a mana ingot, and toss them on there. Now notice I've got sparks above that, that and sparks above those pools. So they'll transfer it when it wants to make something. But to tra use them to transfer mana other times, I'm going to need to get into... Let me show you sparks. 
Okay, so sparks are easy to make. They're just the blaze powder and petals and a gold nugget. But what I want, and again, this takes the, uh, where is it here, recessives. I want some recessives, which takes a rune of earth, pixie dust, and a man of steel ingot. And then what I'll do is I'll have, um, for the producing flowers, there'll be pools out here with sparks with recessives, which will send it to all the other ones that don't have a recessive on it. And it can travel pretty far, and it's better than the way I'm using uh, mana spreaders right now. Okay, so let's finish making our portal. The one th So I've already made the Glimmering Living Wood. That's just living wood with uh, glowstone. So I need three of them. I need the Elven ga Gateway Core, some regular living wood, and what are they called? The portal. No, not pylons. Let's look it up. Okay, so we're going to need two Natura pylons. So we need to make the regular mana pylons first. Well, it's not uh, showing you the regular ones. Okay, so... Whoops. Typed in the wrong spot. Okay, so we need to make two of these first. Mana diamond. We got all the stuff in there. We need two of them. Then we need to make two of these. Okay, oh, I know the other thing we need to make. Um, pools. I need two of those. Now we'll come over here and I'll show you a trick for figuring out where to place this thing. I'm thinking right about here somewhere. So we'll open this up again. See where it says visualize? And then we'll t empty hand. Whoops. I'm thinking right about there. Now I'm going to be taking at least two off the end of this, so it won't be too close there. And I want it reasonably close for the other stuff. So I think that looks like a pretty good place for it. Yes, I plan this out in advance. So, the gateway core goes in the center here. Oh, I'm going to need another type of building block. Let's use cobble. Let's get this other stuff on here. Okay, so living wood there and there. Put cobble there and there just for now. Living wood there. Now this is where the uh, one of the glimmerings goes. Then living wood again. Glimmering again. Just get rid of the these little placeholders. Okay. Now we need our manor pools and our pylons. Okay, now we need to get at least a little bit of mana into this, so I'm not really worried about it for long term, but just short term, I need at least a little bit in there. What mode's it in? Bind mode now, okay. Uh, 
Come on, get some men in there. There. Okay, so we use a stack of these again. That'll give us a half of pool. Come on. You need to get some mana. Yeah, there's no man in it yet. Come up oh, there now. Yeah, just got a pulse. Oop. I moved. I didn't move away fast enough. There we go. Half a pool will do. Then we shift right click this thing, and we've opened up our uh, portal. So let's get some stuff to toss in it. So this is how this thing works. Let's say we wanted uh, some mana pearls and that. Oh, and do I have a full stack of living wood? We'll do it with these three things for now. So the pixie dust, we just toss the uh, mana pearls in there and they spit back pixie dust. This is a one for one trade. Next up we'll throw in mana steel. For that, we're going to get back 32. It's uh, They take two for each one they give me. And I forget what living wood is. This gives us dream wood, so we can upgrade to dream wood spreaders and a bunch of other stuff. So this is one for one as well. Okay, so now I've got everything I need to make the uh, endo flames. And uh, I'll set those up for uh, next episode. And let's show you, I want to show you what I'm working towards. Um, I want to get into Project E, in particular, an energy condenser. Okay, so to get to the energy condenser, we're going to need dark matter from somewhere. Um, to get that, we're going to need a turnless fuel. To get a turnless fuel, we've got to do it through the Philosopher's Stone. The, uh, there was something else that could... So we're going to work towards the Philosopher's Stone. There was something else that uh, could do it. An MK... These things here, but they're disabled in this pack, so we can't use them. So we need a Philosopher's Stone. And that means dire crafting. And for dire crafting, we're going to need the terra steel, which we can now make. We've now got the elementium. We've got all the AE stuff. Notice how all my things are sort of lining up to get this done, right? Um, then we need the nether star. What the? Yeah, that's just that's easy. Whoops. Let's do that again. <sighs> Um, the most interesting one off of this page is this. So we're going to have to kill the Ender Dragon before we get there. And I've got to work out exactly how many Awakened Draconium we're going to need to do this. But we're not that far off from getting into Dire Crafting. Uh, the Dire Table, we also have to make that. And again, that's going to take more Awakened Draconium. The rest of the stuff isn't too bad. Well, I have nether stars. And the diamond lattice is easy enough. So that's what we're working towards. And um, we're not that far off. Maybe a couple more episodes and we should be there. Just saw this out of the corner of my eye. Notice this has changed. I'm doing it differently now. There used to be a cable... Uh, sorry, a um, comparator pointed into this thing with a cable coming out of the comparator up to a dropper above it. 
I ripped all that out. It isn't necessary. And I changed all the recipes so that the uh, stone now goes in through the autonomous activator because I discovered that that worked when I picked up the... Uh, I need one of these to show you. See, it just pops up there the way you want it to. So now I've just put the uh, living stone in the recipe for these. Um, yeah, see living rock, the first thing? It's right in there. So didn't need the dropper at all. Now one other thing that I um, tried but it didn't work. I tried getting rid of this interface and doing it all through the one interface um, because uh, Banzarian had Banzarium had asked me about it and I tried it and exactly what I was afraid would happen was happening. Sometimes, not always, it was inconsistent. Sometimes it wouldn't register as it being the job complete. Other times it'd steal the stuff out of the uh, out of the uh, interface before it got to the um, autonomous activator and shove it in my chest over here. So I could I played around with it for a little bit. I could have probably troubleshooted all those things to stop that from happening, but it just wasn't worth it. A second interface just made it so much simpler. Okay, if you learned something new, hope to see you next time. Go out there and have some fun. Thanks.